Well, hello and welcome to another Tyrrell's Classic Workshop. In this one, we're going to be looking at two cars with running problems. As it happens, they're both Italian V12s, one a Ferrari and one a Lamborghini, but they're, um, they're not happy at all. They're, they're, uh, they're down on cylinders, both of them, for various reasons, which have yet to be discovered. So one by one, I'm going to bring them back to life, get them running on 12 pots again, and uh, taking them out on the road and making sure that they're doing what they should be. So let's have a look at the first one. This is our first Italian V12. It's our old friend um, chassis number 109, the fifth production Lamborghini ever built. It started life as a 350 GT, which by the name of the model uh, meant it was a three and a half litre uh, V12 engine, which is as Giotto Bezzarini originally intended the engine to be or designed it to be. What the Lamborghini engineers, Gianpaolo Dallara and Paolo Stanzani, did was to turn uh, Bizzarini's design into a stronger, more hardy unit because the three and a half litre wasn't fantastically reliable in service. The cylinder block was sort of there or thereabouts in terms of strength, but it, it became apparent that in long term service, it didn't really um, work properly without a bit of improvement. So what they did in 1966 was bring out the 4-litre engine, the 400 GT. Um, and what happened was cars such as this, when they went back to the factory service department, they said to customers, look, we've got this wonderful V12 engine which produces more power um, and is more reliable. Why don't you let us swap out the 3.5-litre engine for the 4-litre engine? And uh, it'll fit perfectly because it's like for like virtually. And a lot of people did. Um, there are some 350 GTs still going around with their original three and a half liter engines, but many that went back to the Assistenza Servisa, uh, the sort of customer relations department of the factory, um, actually had this modification. And this car is one of them. And the beauty is, because these cars are so light, um, and this engine develops allegedly 350 brake horsepower, or 325, depending on who you talk to, it's a lot of power for a 1400 kilo car in the 1960s. And a lot of cars just couldn't compete with it. Aston Martins weren't really developing that sort of power. Um, and neither, dare I say it, were road going Ferraris. The, uh, the 275 GTB uh, was developing with, in six car Beretta form, sort of its ultimate iteration, um, about 270 brake horsepower. And then when the 4 cam 275 came out uh, in 1966-67, it was developing 300 brake horsepower. So um, this was faster than the equivalent Ferrari and Aston Martin at the time. It actually went like the wind with the 4-litre engine in it. Uh, but this car, unfortunately, is not going like the wind at the moment. It's come in. Before we start taking the car apart to restore it, uh, I just want to see how it actually drives on the road. I need to do a mechanical assessment of it. So that's what we're up to at the moment. We've dug it out. Um, I haven't even attempted to get this car running properly yet. So the reason I suspect for the misfiring is nothing more than um, fouled up spark plugs. Uh, at the risk of stating the obvious, if the spark doesn't jump between the electrodes on a spark plug, you get no spark, you get no combustion. The cylinder is simply um, a very, a very petroly and a very horrible um, resistance to all the other cylinders that are working, not what you want. So we're just going to have a look at this. I, I can normally, through various tricks, uh, bring quite often cylinders back to life by just treating the engine in a certain way. So what we do is warm it up very gently, um, keeping it at about 1500 RPM, so the engine is revolving at a reasonable speed. It's not idling and it's not racing. Um, but we get some heat through the engine and the spark plugs can actually start to work again. They can self-clean and sort themselves out. And you'd be surprised how much this happens. Um, I'm very reluctant to just blanket take spark plugs out of engines and put them back in again. Because every time you do that, you're slightly wearing the thread in the spark plug aperture in the cylinder head. And in fact, on these engines, the spark plugs are not easily accessible at all. It's, um, it's people's natural tendency 
and a situation such as this, to think that um, taking the car out on the road and driving it will actually sort the sort of missing cylinders out, but it, it doesn't quite work like that. Spark plugs are funny beasts. They do need a bit of TLC to, uh, to bring them back to life again. And if you, put the, if you drive the engine too hard, put it under too much load, or just um, uh, sort of let it idle, it, they won't come back to life. There has to be a certain technique to this. So um, that's what I'm going to utilize. And uh, you never know, she might come back on 12 or we might be stuck with ones that don't work, but uh, it's certainly the right thing to start with. So let's just start her up, get her warmed up, uh, this is the first time this has happened to it, to the car for quite a while, and just see how she responds. We've warmed the engine up and uh, a couple of the cylinders have chimed in again, so I'm guessing it sounds to me like it's running on about eight now. The fact that the, there's popping and spitting coming out of the exhaust is a good sign because that means that the spark plugs are trying to work inside the combustion chambers. So what I'm doing is sort of working my way around the carburettors now, just sort of very roughly adjusting them. Uh, so that they, I can tell which cylinders are working and which aren't. And through this process, um, the engine has sort of warmed up even more, it's come to life even more. The popping and spitting has stopped and some more cylinders have chimed in. So we're up to 10 cylinders working now. And I'm going around the engine and I've ascertained um, that it's uh, the back two cylinders on the right hand side of the engine, that back carburetor is actually not doing anything coincidental that they happen to be next to each other because they're getting fuel. So they would, it, one would normally blame the carburetor if two cylinders are coming from the same thing, but it's not. It's just pure coincidence in this case. And I'm lifting the HT lead off with some chicken pliers, as they're called, plastic pliers, because I don't particularly want to be electrocuted when the uh, HT shorts out through me, as opposed to the spark plug. Um, so I'm uh, pulling the leads off because um, if I pull the leads off so that the spark has to go somewhere else and then gently introduce it to the top of the plug, leaving a few millimetres gap, you can actually hear that cylinder working because the spark plug is put, being put under pressure with um, a jumping spark more than a spark that's permanently connected. It sounds weird, but it works. So. I've done that with the last two leads on, the, uh, on that right-hand side and I've ascertained that the other 10 cylinders are now working satisfactorily. I'm pretty happy with that, but we won't know for sure until we fix these two. So I'm going to actually take the two plugs out of that and um, put a, a, new, a new spark plug in each of those cylinders and that should really make a difference to the engine now. And to do that, I'm using this. This is a genuine Lamborghini factory spark plug socket from 1970. Uh, and the reason why I have to use this is because the wall going down to the spark plug in the engine is extremely thin and there's hardly any material on this and they're designed that way. I don't know why Lamborghinis made the, the spark plug bores so small, but they did. They're excruciatingly difficult to get out these plugs. But um, there we are, handily we've got one of these. So I'm now gonna take those two plugs out, replace them, and uh, let's see what difference that makes. It's very, very important to feed these in very carefully um, with very light, you see I'm using very light finger pressure uh, to make sure that the plug actually goes into the thread nice and, nice and easy. We don't want any cross-threaded spark plugs, thank you very much.
Again, just a very delicate touch to try and get the plug started, get it happy. And there we go. Just nip up the compression washer, not over tighten. And now we can put the leads back on and this should make a dramatic difference. We should have a V12 Lamborghini again. And this engine is quite warm. And this lead does not want to go on, which is not a good combination. There we go. Let's see how, how she sounds now. And now finally, I'm just going to, I over adjusted this carburetor opening to feature those two plugs. And I'm now going to back this off to equal it back with the others and she should smooth out and slow down nicely. There we have it. That sounds better. Well, now that we've uh, had a good look round and sort of got things uh, back to life again, I'm gonna just give the car a run and see how it performs on the road. It's, um, the purpose of this is before we start stripping the car massively to do the restoration on the bodywork, etc. cetera, um, I'd prefer to know that she's mechanically sort of up and running and able to do what she's supposed to do. Um, so if she doesn't, if I find that there's some faults, then at least we can notify them now um, on the job sheet and then uh, fix them as we go. But let's see if the engine's uh, back on 12 cylinders on the road. Let's hope so. Uh, off we go. I can tell immediately she's pulling really nicely from low down. Yeah, she's pulling crisply. So I think we're all right. I don't know when the last time it was running on 12 was, but it doesn't take long really to contaminate spark plugs if, if they're in a hostile environment. Uh, being started, shunted round, moved. Um, engines are designed to warm up properly uh, and then be driven of this era. Um, and if they don't have those sort of ideal conditions, if they're started and stopped, it doesn't take long for them to uh, start complaining normally. So we'll see how we get on. Um, I mean, I'm very happy with this. She's pulling, she's smooth, slow down. There's no, no kangaroo petrol. Uh, so let's, let's see how we get on on the road. Oh, she sounds very sweet. Yeah, everything it should be really. Um, very nice. Now the brake servos are sticking, the brakes are sticking on, which is not great. There's, there's two brake servos and they're mounted at the front of the boot behind the back seat. So I'm not going to try anymore. Uh, the brakes are freeing off now, I can feel them. Uh, yeah, she's freewheeling. So before the brakes get warm, 
or before I have to use them again, we'll go back to the garage. But we've proved that at least the engine is uh, is is all right. It's pulling like a train, actually, and very smooth. I mean, that's pulling away from a thousand revs, and she's as smooth as silk. So, all right, tick in the box that. Yeah, the brakes are free again now, no resistance. So we'll just take it back to the workshop. Oil pressures as it should be. Uh, the Italian oil pressure gauges are generally electric, so we don't tend to believe everything we see with those. We check them with a mechanical independent pressure gauge which we plug into the engine um, and uh, but if I had any concerns about oil pressure obviously I wouldn't be driving it at all but the oil no she sounds mechanically quiet the oil pressure is uh, is five kilograms per centimeter which is fine we'll just pull straight back in again but at least the engine is uh, it, it doesn't really do them any good to be firing on less than all their cylinders. The bores get washed and uh, things w wear out more quickly. Uh, so um, from that point of view I know that we, we, uh, we're on safe ground now if we need to, to start and drive the car. So I can start to make a, a list out. I can feel that the, the steering wheel is off-center, uh, the bit of play in the clutch pedal, things like that. So that will all be noted down and dealt with and uh, we can take the car apart and do whatever needs to be done. A few people have commented on this car in the, uh, in the videos previously and in Harry's garage videos actually. This is a Ferrari Daytona. It's a right-hand drive example. Uh, it's not an original factory Daytona Spider. It was done in the mid 70s, shortly after the car was new by Strayman in California, uh, to very exacting standards actually. It's not that different to the original Piniferina uh, job that they did. They only made seven right-hand drive factory Daytona Spiders. And a car in this color combination, um, Azzurro Dino Metallizzato, with the beige, the light tan interior, if my memory serves me correctly, it was an exactly coloured car. One of the original seven was owned by Pete Townsend from The Who. Uh, but this car is a chop top, as it's called, but it's still a beautiful example. It's done 8,600 miles only from new, uh, and that's documented and genuine. So it's one of the lowest mileage Daytonas in the world. Uh, as I say, it started as a coupe, then it was converted, uh, but the car still drives fabulously well. Um, we did a, a restoration job on this car about five or six years ago. Uh, it came in as black with black and red leather. We color changed it back to the original factory color, which is a beautiful um, Pinaferina. It was part of Pinaferina's original color palette for the Daytonas in period. And um, we also made the interior back to the uh, Connolly original color. The car is actually for sale, uh, so we've dug it out because we try to keep the cars in a state of readiness at all times. And I like to dig them out every so often and just make sure they're up to snuff, really. Uh, brakes aren't pulling, all the usual maladies. Suspension isn't seized, engines behaving. And this one is not, um, it's not really very good. It sounds okay, but it's got no power whatsoever. So I'm gonna just start it up and Let's see what it sounds like before we go any further. At first sounding, she sounds okay. Um, 
it's, it's picking up reasonably well, it's smooth enough, uh, but it's ticking over far too slowly. It sounds laboured. I mean, a Daytona should really crack when you pop the throttle. Uh, it, it should be absolutely gulping air in and really revving quickly. For so big an engine, it's got quite a light flywheel, uh, which means that it spins up really quickly. So um, it sounds to me like it's down on one bank, one complete bank of six cylinders. I've come across this before. Um, each um, uh, bank has its own ignition system. It's basically two six cylinder engines joined together. Well, that's what this engine is, as with many V12s. Uh, and the ignition systems are autonomous. They're completely separate. Uh, apart from the electrical feed, that's it. That's all they have in common. Everything else, the whole, the whole system, the low tension system, as it's called, the high tension system, uh, it's all inter, uh, independent. So I'm just going to have a look at the, start with the basics, have a look at the electrical feeds. It's not going to be very much because the last time this car ran, it ran really well. But the problem is if we leave it like this, it's going to cause damage. Um, it, 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 you've got unburnt fuel going through the cylinders in the engine, which is not great. Um, the, the plugs get fouled up, the spark plugs, and stop working. So I want to nip this in the bud uh, now, and let's see if we can get her uh, back uh, working as she should. So I'm going to start by just looking and inspecting the ignition systems on each bank. Well, I've delved a little more deeply into this. Um, it's, the, it's that bank that are not working. It's all six cylinders. Uh, it's remarkable that an engine can sound so sweet, really, only running on half of it. Uh, so I'm now going to work my way back through the ignition system and see if I can get it to, to actually burst in, to chime in. Uh, I'll start with the low tension system first. As I said, I'm sure it's not much. Uh, it could be a rotor arm that's gone down inside the distributor. It could be a bad electrical feed. Uh, but I'll just start with the basics and see if we can get a result. Well, I've found the problem. Um, it is the low tension side, so it's the electrical feed to the distributor. Uh, and somebody over the years has put this rather nasty electrical connector on the wiring, uh, which was actually intermittently making it, well, more breaking than making, actually. Uh, so I'm going to change out this connector here, put something uh, better on it. Uh, it's amazing because that connector could have been there for years, but it's just suddenly started playing up. Uh, fortunately, I've come across this before on them over the years. So um, not the specific thing, but banks going down and causing this problem. So we'll change that out. We'll try it again and see if that uh, hopefully it hasn't affected any of the spark plugs and damaged, caused them to stop working. Uh, but one step at a time. Let's get it back and working first. There we are. That's a rather more tidy repair. So we'll see how the engine sounds now. Hopefully better. Well, if only everything in life was as simple as that, the world would be a very happy place. Uh, struck lucky there, really, but um, there we are. We'll give the car a run now to make sure that she's, um, you know, it's been a while since this car's been used, so I want to make sure she's in tip-top order. So uh, let's go and hear what the engine sounds like in action and in anger. Well, here we are on the road. 
We've got readings on the water temperature. She's almost, well, she is up to normal temperature now. The oil temperature gauge is off its seat, which is sort of all you can hope for, really, uh, in a Daytona, unless you're tanking it down the motorway or at very, very high speeds, uh, because there's uh, nearly 15 litres of engine oil in a Daytona, and it's remotely located in a tank and it doesn't really get warm that easily. So we're just about to open her up and let's see if under load, she's still running, she's nice on 12 now, she's poodling along. Let's see how she responds when I uh, open the taps. Daytona should. These cars have got such big lungs. I mean, this was the fastest production car in the world uh, when it was around in the late 60s and early 70s, and with good reason. So I'm just going to go around this bend again, and we'll just try her again, just because we can. on song makes in a car like this it makes or breaks it driving a v12 that's running on nine or ten cylinders is a misery the whole car feels bogged down it's obviously unhappy the heart of the machine is not beating properly uh, it makes such a difference for this to be uh, you know for, for the v12 to be running on 12 cylinders and sometimes it's not easy for people to detect whether they're running on minus one or two it could be a V10 and still be very quick and still sound great. But, um, you know, when, it, when it's on 12, there's nothing like it. Yeah. The suspension's settling down now. The shock absorbers are getting warm. The brakes are warming up a bit. Just delightful, just delightful. This is, uh, I'm going to do the litmus test now on a Ferrari V12 road engine of this era. Uh, they should, if they're tuned pretty well 100%, pull from 1500 RPM if you floor the throttle. So, um, or thereabouts. Uh, it's not easy to do, of course, in modern traffic. Oh, well. In fact, we've got a car behind us now, so I'll just go around this bend. Sorry, Mr. Gentleman, behind. Put into fourth gear. There we are, that's 1500 RPM in fourth. And there she is. to go back to her old self. Well that concludes another Tyrrell's Classic Workshop. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been sort of a bit like a day in the life of, I suppose you could say. Uh, if you have enjoyed it, please keep watching, please keep subscribing. Uh, please recommend it and um, I want to say a big thank you to Harry at Harry's Garage Vids for getting me on my way with this and also thank you for everybody's really encouraging comments. Um, so thanks very much and uh, look forward to the next one.